waves of sound. Strong and clear to the ears of a healthy child. But what if your child gets a middle ear infection? What doctors call otitis media. Along with distorted or muffled sound, the pain of an acute ear infection can be severe. My ear hurts. It does. Look how many here. Yeah. To understand why, let's look at how we hear sounds. The outer ear picks up sound waves and sends them into the ear canal. At the end of the canal is the eardrum, which separates the outer ear from the middle ear. The middle ear, which is about the size of a large pea, has three tiny bones attached to the eardrum. When sound waves vibrate the eardrum, these bones send the vibrations to the inner ear. The inner ear then generates nerve impulses to the brain. Now let's look in more detail at the middle ear, the site where the infection takes place. The middle ear is filled with air. The air comes from the back of the throat through the eustachian tube, which is behind the nose. In a healthy ear, the air pressure is the same in the middle ear as it is outside the ear. In many young children, though, the eustachian tube doesn't function properly. When this happens, a cold, sinus infection, or sore throat can cause infection to travel up the tube and reach the middle ear. An acute infection in the middle ear usually causes earache, an inflamed eardrum, and a buildup of fluid in the middle ear. As long as this fluid buildup continues, it interferes with hearing. When this occurs, your doctor will recommend antibiotics to clear up any infection, and he will also check for hearing loss. After many infections, the adenoids located behind the nose and roof of your mouth, and which produce antibodies to fight infection, may provide a home for germs that cause infections. This can lead to more ear infections. Another cause of fluid in the middle ear occurs when the eustachian tube does not work. Oh. Well, you know, you've been having a lot of ear infections, and I can see some changes in that ear of yours. If ear infections last a long time, if they keep coming back, or if they don't respond to antibiotics, surgery may be recommended. This procedure is called a myringotomy with the placement of pressure equalizing tubes. Your child should not have anything to eat or drink after midnight the night before surgery. The day of the procedure, your child will go to the hospital and go to a room to get ready for surgery. There your child will meet the people who will assist the doctor. The operating room is a special room set up to perform surgery in a very safe way. While your child is under general anesthesia, which means he will be asleep, your doctor will make a small opening in the eardrum to remove any fluid. The small pressure equalizing tube will then be inserted to balance the air pressure on both sides of the eardrum. This will prevent fluid from building up and help to prevent infections from coming back. These tubes are very small, and depending on the type, they may fall out on their own, or your doctor may remove them later. Your doctor may also remove the adenoids if they are contributing to the problem. After the surgery, your child will be brought to the recovery room. Good, good. Let me look and see her. And then this one, no drainage. He looks good. Oh, good. Yeah, he looks just fine. Your child may have an upset stomach from the anesthesia for several hours after the procedure. There is also a chance of infection from the surgery. If fluid builds up or infections keep coming back, the small tubes may need to be replaced after they fall out. In rare instances, the surgery could leave the eardrum with a small scar. 
or there could be a persistent opening in the eardrum, possibly requiring further surgery. If drainage continues to occur after the tubes are inserted, contact your doctor. If there was fluid in the ear that was drained, hearing will be improved immediately. After resting for just a few hours, your child will be able to go home. Once home, your child will be back to normal in a day or two. If tubes were inserted, it's important to keep the ears dry when bathing or swimming to prevent infection. Earplugs or cotton balls coated with Vaseline may be recommended. Your child will be scheduled for a follow-up visit to check the position of the tubes and to make sure there is no infection. It's important to keep the follow-up visit with the doctor. Sometime after the surgery, a hearing test may be done to determine whether hearing has returned to normal. In addition to relieving the pain, successful treatment of otitis media will open up the world of sound to your child once again.